Whether you know about art or not, there's a good chance that you've heard of the British icon Turner. Artist and painter, so much has been written about him and so much of it is so easily read um, available on the internet. So in today's session, I'm not going to bombard you with lots of facts and figures. But what I thought I'd do, I'd just tell you a little story that I found whilst researching for today's session. Norman Castle in Tweed was a landscape and castle architecture that Turner painted throughout his career. And one day whilst walking past, he stopped, bowed his hat, and his travelling companion asked what he was doing. And Turner said to him, I painted Norham Castle in my youth, and since then I have never wanted for work. And I think that shows that Turner never forgot his humble beginnings, that he always knew that his career could be over in a flash. Now, I don't think it's controversial to say that Turner is more known for his dramatic seascapes and his skies that take up about two thirds of his canvases. And that's what we're gonna be learning about in today's session. We're gonna be focusing on Turner's watercolor sketches of skies. Now I've got a few um, samples on my desk in front of me and we're also going to be copying from some Turner's sketchbooks as well. So what I'll do, I'll pop you down and we can start the session. So I was recommended this book by a friend and it's fast becoming a favourite of mine. It's the Sky Sketchbook, um, Turner's Skies. So, so this is a sketchbook that he would have kept in his pocket to get out every now and then when he was out and about sketching skies. And they're all done in watercolours. There's some also some pencil sketches towards the background, um, towards the back, but it is these watercolours that we're going to focus on. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful book. And I think there's something in every single um, sort of watercolour sketch, something different that you see every time. But there's a few that I particularly wanted to show you. Bear with me while I find them. So let me show you first. These are just amazing because just in a few simple strokes, just a few colours, he's managed to show a skyscape. And we've all seen that sort of sky as well. Um, there's another one here as well. Just really beautiful, simple, so serene. And then as we move on, so they're all dotted about, so they're in no real order, we can see the storm starting to come in and maybe sort of a little bit more of the work we're familiar with, with Turner's work. And then as the storm comes in, we get these great dark skies. And you can see as well that he's not just using a brush. So if you notice in the materials and equipment, I've asked you to also bring um, something like just a piece of rag, some kitchen roll, that sort of thing, so that we can make these lovely lines in it too. So we could then, we have this, the storms come in and it's raining now. And again, we've got these dashes. So this could have been done with a rag, but um, he could have also used his fingers. Famously, he was known for spitting on work as well and mixing that into the paints. I'm not going to ask you to do that, but I think, but I'm hoping that there's going to be some techniques today that maybe you don't normally associate with watercolour that we're going to use, that you can sort of have a go if, if you're having watercolour for your first time or if it's something you do already and you'd like to sort of advance in it. And then we have these sort of more serene sunsets. And there's just a few here as well. So we've, we've come from the sea to the land. Beautiful. So we're gonna have a go at trying out some of these sketches. And this is a book that I would definitely recommend getting. Um, it's, it's a tape, tape book, so um, one of the galleries, and with an introduction by David Blaine Brown. Um, and it really is a beautiful book. I would definitely, if you enjoy today's session, I would definitely recommend 
um, getting that. So you've got that and you can practice from this. So to start with, um, I'll show you the exercise that I want us to do. So we're going to use this one as an example. We're going to copy from this. Now, at school, you were probably told you mustn't copy work. But to copy an artist's work really gets you, lets you sort of take um take a look into their brain and to the, the way their hands work and the way that they use materials. So this is what we're going to do. But before we do this, we're just going to have a play around with some of these techniques with some washes, using the rag to scratch and to take out colour. We're going to use our fingers to make strokes in it. And we're also going to use and the rag to make large colour washes too. So let's have a go at that. So grab a piece of paper. So I've got some old wallpaper here and I'm going to be using the back. You can use watercolour paper. You could use a really thick card. Just something that's not going to start disintegrating as soon as you put the water onto it because we're going to use very light colour washes. I'm just going to put my book to one side. And I've got my water. Um, and I've also got some paints here. I'll move everything along so you can see it a bit better. There we go. So you don't need expensive paints for this. Uh, you can use either tubes of watercolour or just these little watercolours, just the little set ones. If you're using the set ones, before you start, just go along each one, just dabbing it with a little bit of water or with a spray bottle so that they're ready for when we start painting. So we probably won't use all of these colours. We're looking to use white. I'm very quickly running out of white. I need to do need to get some more of that at some point. Uh, we're probably going to use some of the yellows, the blues, the greens, the blacks and the browns. Um, and in one of our paintings, we're also going to use the, the sort of the purple colour too, the indigo. So let's start just experimenting. So I've got a large brush like that. I've got a medium sized brush and I've also got a very thin rigger brush to use. Again, they don't need to be expensive. Um, probably better to have the watercolour paint brushes rather than these stiff brushes. Uh, but that's the only recommendation. So if it's if it's your first time, really just just have a practice, have a play. And I want you to give yourself permission today just to make mistakes, just to play. I'm not looking, myself, I'm not looking to have any of my paintings particularly looking like the, 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 the image that we're copying from. I just want to have a play, really just find out what all these, what all these um, materials do. So I've got my water and I've got my paints. I might just actually let me take it up a little bit higher so you might be able to see a bit better. There we go. So I'm going to start just by putting lots of water into my white paint. And making a mix there and then we can just add some of these tints and then you can just use your rag just to do a long nice sweeping wash or you could also just use your brush we get a lot more water with it on your brush. So we're just checking out how our different materials and equipment work. If we use our thinner brush, I've got a darker sort of grey there. And I'm just going to hold it by the end so that I haven't got a lot of control over it and just drag it through the paint. And we'll notice a difference as we go from 
the wash that was done with the rag to the wash that was done with the brush and then just on its own. So again back to our larger brush or really however you're finding this you know you don't have to copy what I'm doing just find your own have your own make your own experiments so let's just dab on and see what happens there we could pick it up allow that to run and immediately you've got a stormy sky so that's quite wet so I'm going to take that to one side and do another one so with this one I'm going to do another wash uh, I think I'll use the rag actually because I don't want it too wet I should really take this out so I'm going to go right up to the edges let's take this And with this one, we're going to try taking away some of the paint using the rags. So let's mix up. Some more colours. So when you're mixing colours, always start with light and add dark to it. It's always easier that way round. It's, it's quicker. It's much quicker to do it that way. And also you don't use as much paint as well. That's slightly darker. Of course that's slightly dry. So let's just put some of these lines on. Again, I'm not looking for it to be anything particularly, but I'm just laying the paint on quite heavily. So if we're thinking in terms of a rainstorm, scratch into it. And use your rag just to take some of that colour away. And I'm just playing about really, just seeing what I can do with the, so I'm making this more of a landscape, I think. I've added a bit of, added a few trees, bushes. You really don't need to make it into anything. And then if I did want to make this more of a landscape uh, with a huge sky, um, I need to do a little bit more work on the sky, but that's very wet at the moment. So you could either take, if you're impatient, take some out. And then add some more in. Go really stormy. They're almost purple. You know when the sky is almost purple, it's so black. Let's see. Oh, and I've got a bit carried away now. 
So we're going to leave that one. So that's our practice. So just really finding out what those watercolours can do and how we can scratch into them, take some out using our rags. And now we're going to have a go. Now, if you're happy that you've had a little experiment with those materials, we're going to have a go at copying one of Turner's paintings. I'm just going to put my wet paintings to one side. And if you could get three pieces of paper out for me, please. So we're just going to start all of these together and then a couple of them are going to be used in a minute or two. And I want you just to create one of those very watery washes. So it can have a tint to it, just a slight sort of grey, got sort of a grey ochre there. And I'm just going to dabble my rag and just go all the way over. That's it. We don't want it very wet. And the driest one we're going to use for this first exercise, which I think is that one, and the other two just put to one side and we'll come back to those. And this is the... I can find it. Front the turn book. This is the one that I would like you to have a go at. So I'll just make sure it's the right way around for you. Make sure you can see that okay. I think I need a bigger screen, don't I? There we go. I think you should be able to see that okay. And I'm going to be working here. So I don't want to take too long on this. So what I'm going to do is just time us um, and I'm going to give us maybe four or five minutes. So let's try with four minutes and then we'll see how we how we get on. So mix your colours up first. I haven't started the time, don't worry. So I'm going to mix. So what have I got? I've got some sort of brownie greys, again going into this purple, almost purple. And I've got this unexpected little bit of blue here as we go into the sea. So let's mix up. Colours, hope you can see that. There we go, so that's great for that. And a couple of shades of that grey. Just a touch of brown. Dirty that up a bit. So this is good for the one I made earlier, be good for that bit there. And then I've just got this little bit of blue, slight suggestion of green as well. So let's have a look at this blue. Yeah, that's not bad actually. Let's just dirty that up, I don't want it to stand up too much. Um, and then we can use this, some of that Got a bit of green. So again, I've got my two brushes, my larger brush and also my small, bigger brush. I've already done a wash over it. Um, and I'm going to be doing this upside down. Again, I'm not fussed about it really looking like the actual picture. I'm just playing around really. So I've got an example. 
example here, so I might just try and use that as a copy. So let's start with this dark here. So go right up to the, the edge. And you can see he's done it in almost sweeping movements. And then we've got this darker. Oh, I haven't set the timer. Okay, let's start the timer. Start, so you can go. <laughs> And then it's very pale towards the edge. And you can see it hasn't quite made the edge, it's just taken the brush all the way along. Let's get some more of this dark paint down. This isn't the easiest actually doing it. <laughs> doing it upside down. Mix up a little bit more of that purple and So then we've got some of this lighter colour coming up in here and it touches, touches in a couple of places actually. And then this unexpected little bit of blue. So I'm going to use my smaller brush. That just again, I'm going to use the end of the brush. So I haven't got an awful lot of control over it. Just see what see where it goes. See where it leads. And then use the side of that brush just to bring that green over. So we've got a couple of minutes left. How are you getting on? Are you just getting it, getting all the paint down? So if you have just joined us um, and you're wondering what we're doing, we are copying some of Turner's work, some of his watercolour sketches from one of his sketchbooks. It's going to take my rag. Go, I've got 30 seconds left. There. So just come up for five seconds left for three two one and that's time up so how did you get on how did that feel so you were looking at the the different brush strokes we were looking at the colors we were looking at how and sometimes he's used it very wet so that it merged in sometimes he's left it very dry so that we've got we can see the paper underneath and don't be afraid to leave some of that paper untouched as well i think it shows a sort of a confident artist actually if you can just leave bits of paper untouched and it can really make parts of the image pop 
So that's how Turner did it. So let's have a go at recreating that, but using some images from one of his favourite places to paint, which was Margate. So in a minute, you're going to see on, a, on the screen one of the stills from a time lapse video that you can find on YouTube. We will put, put it into the um, comments box later on. Um, and I've just taken a couple of stills from the video that we're going to see now. So here we go. So here we go. It's a lovely one, just sort of just coming up to sunset. And I'm going to find that on my iPad so I can copy that as well. So again, with this one, I'm going to give you four minutes to do it. I'll be, just because of my setup, unfortunately, you can't really see what I'm doing at the time, at the same time. Um, if you would like, I can tell you what I'm doing. Um, if you just want to paint in silence, then please feel, feel free to turn down the volume. But I'll let you know what I'm doing. And then at the end of four minutes, um, I'll show you what I've come up with um, and if you would like to put it in the comments if you take a quick photo pop it in the comments then I'd love to see your artwork oh that looked like we might be able to see what I'm doing as well um, if if you can let, uh, let us know in the comments if that's that's big enough for you that image that you can see it so that you can paint along we'll have a go like this and um, if it doesn't work for you then let us know and we can change it just so that you can see the image in full okay so take one of your pieces of paper that we did those color washes on earlier there we go and we're going to start just by mixing up these colors so we've got some pinks here We want to mix up those colours. Don't worry, I haven't started the timer yet. Let's mix up our colours. So lots of white again. Um, I'm going to just need to let's take some of these out. So I've got some spare. Don't need that green for here. So we've got this uh, sort of darker blue up towards the, the right hand side. I mean, I'm not I'm not going too prescriptive on this. But it's just kind of as an idea. So we've got some dark blues going on and um, we've got these. It's like a really pale yellow. Let's see how this mixes up. Oh, no, that's too much. Right. Let's start with that one again. That's just the hint of that. Then we've got these grey clouds. Looks like a little bit more grey. I think I'm going to need that. Okay. So. Let's go in. I'm going to just change my rack because that one's covered in paint now. Okay. And I'm just going to start. Oh, we're going to start the timer. Okay, so start. So 
So we've got our base, which is our all our blues. Let's take that right up to the edge. That's not there. Then I've just done drawn on the drawn the horizon. Oh, drawn it in. <laughs> just painted it in, just the rag. So I can work that. Got a lower cloud. Just here. And then we've got C as well, which I haven't. Okay, let's start adding some of that cloud in. So I'm putting in quite thick. So it's just a suggestion of a cloud here. I'm putting on quite thick and then I'm going to go in for the rag and take that down. Let's just have a look how we get on for time. Got two minutes left. Got these larger clouds here. I think I want to go darker on these ones. smaller ones and I'm just going to run my fingernail through there and go in with a smaller brush I'm struggling to get this yellow actually it's 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 glowing. It's like a glowing yellow. Let's see if uh, that can do any better. Need a really strong strong white. I need to let that dry for a bit. Um, put in time. Ah, less than a minute left. Okay, right. Let's take out some of this. And that is time. There we go. Okay, how did you get on? As I say, I'm not after it looking exactly the same, thankfully. Um, but I enjoyed the process. And I hope you did as well. So we're going to have one final try of that. So we're going to go for the second picture, which is um, it's a bit brighter, this one. So grab your piece of paper. Have that ready. And if we can have the next um, image up, please. Mm -hmm. There may be a technical problem. OK, 
Okay. Let's just uh, Uh, we don't seem to be able to get that image up. What I can do, I can show it to you on my iPad. Let's see if that works. Oh, here we go. Yes, we have the image up. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Right. So you can see this is a very serene image. We've got quite a lot of blue and then just it's very, very light on the right hand side with these just gorgeous clouds just sort of streaking the sky from right to left and then a bit hazy towards the horizon so let's mix up some blue And that, ski, that sea is really blue as well, isn't it? It's really reflecting the sky. So, and there's a little bit of a pink tinge as well. So maybe this is what this one is, sort of near to sunset. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to need to get some more white after this. Good. So it's kind of this pinky grey. And then I've got a bit more white mixed up here. Great for the clouds. So let's start with that blue wash. Oh, let's start the timer as well. Okay, so four minutes go. Let's get lots of that, drench that blue. So I'm using a brush here rather than the rag. So I want that, that really solid colour. So come up to the edge, be a lighter wash. Gets hazier towards the horizon. And then we're back with the C, reflecting that. Okay, so I'm going to use my rag just to take a bit of that out. And then not quite so watered down, which I think I'm going to use a thinner brush for this. Let's just start. And ideally, if you're doing like a proper watercolour painting, you'd want you'd want some of this to drop be a bit drier. But remember these are just little little sketches. So I'm just using a thicker white and I'm just adding those clouds. 
Oh, let's have a look how we're doing for time. Okay, we've got about a minute 20 left. And if you know the clouds are tinged with this. And that is time. I want to sort of finish that tiny bit there. There we go. Okay, timer off. So how did you get on? Did you enjoy that? So please do let me know in the comments how you found that today if you had a go. Um, if you are going to have a go, please do let us know and also post some photos um, because we can't see you it's so nice when people do join in and have a go um, and then post photos about what they've done and i just want to leave you um with a little bit of the back of the book that says um jmw turner drew and painted skies all his life as a boy he liked to lie on his back to capture the clouds and weather and in later life he made many studies of the kent coastline in southeast england which he believed had the most beautiful skies in Europe. And those last two images that we, sh that we, sh that we saw, that we painted from, were actually taken from Margate. Um, so it's lovely to know that that same horizon Turner would have also painted from. So that's what you've been painted today. Um, and then it just goes on to talk more about this book, which I would definitely suggest um, you have a look at. Don't, I'm not on commission or anything, but it is just such a beautiful book full of Turner's watercolour skies um, from very, very faint, you know, almost just a perception of what's there right through to these beautiful dramatic watercolour sketches as well. So thank you for joining me. A little bit different to what I normally do. Um, if you enjoyed it, please do let me know in the comments. Um, I would love to find out if you want to do more of this sort of thing. Um, and I will see you again soon. Thanks so much for joining me today. Bye.